welcome everyone to F. True Crime. So thank you for joining me here. Welcome back or just welcome. Um, before we get into today's case, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you will never miss out on a future case. You will get that little alert and that little ding that will tell you, oh, she's found something. Also, don't forget to head over to our F. True Crime pages. Uh, that are set up on Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, and especially Facebook. Always there. Always updating cases if there are updates that need that have come out. Uh, new cases, not even new cases that we're following, just cases that are on in going on in the news. We will be putting together a new merch store also. So you can buy your F Up True Crime mugs, which I have, but I don't have it on me and some pretty cool other things like toe tag bookmarks and all kinds of wicked stuff so let's get into today's case 33 year old fahim sali was the ceo and founder of gokarta a motorcycle ride sharing company that launched in 2018 He had 15 years of entrepreneurial experience. His first company started while he was still attending high school and it generated over a million dollars in revenue. After college, he then went on to teach himself how to program and he started kickback ads. Seeing an opportunity in his parents' native country of Bangladesh, He went on to co-found the largest ride-sharing company in the country valued now at over a hundred million dollars. On LinkedIn, a man gave him a glowing reference. It writes, Fahim Salih is one of the brightest young entrepreneurs I have ever met and worked with. For him is constantly challenging the status quo by creating new ventures and continually brainstorming innovative business models. I had the pleasure of launching a company with Fahim while at Bentley University and couldn't have met a better business partner at the time. I highly recommend Fahim for anything tech, entrepreneurial or business development related. There are many glowing things being said about for him and he actually comes across as a genuine guy. A lot of people, you know, even horrible people have glowing things written about them when they pass away. It's not something I've ever understood, but that's just me. But for him, I've never, I have not seen one, one bad thing written about this guy. And you'll see... A little further on in the case, as we get to the recent um, things that have been going on, the man didn't have a bad bone in his body. Something that is so rare today. On the afternoon of July 14th, 2020, just one week ago, Fahim Salih was found dead. Headless and dismembered in his New York apartment. However, his dog Layla was found alive and untouched in the home. A reporter said that for him's body was found by his cousin in different plastic bags inside his lower east side apartment. The cousin went to visit him after she hadn't heard from him in a day, something that was very out of character for him. A saw was found on scene and it was still plugged in. Following her call to 911, the New York Police Department went to the seventh floor condo on the Lower East Side at approximately 3.30 p.m. Detectives took the cousin to the seventh precinct station house. They wanted to usher her away from any cameras and anyone that wanted to pry and was only there to find out details and wasn't there to actually comfort her. According to the New York Daily News, a surveillance camera has caught for him's last moments. 
The supposed footage, which hasn't been released as yet, but it is very early in the case, it shows him getting into the elevator leading to his apartment on the Monday. And he was followed closely by a man dressed in a suit, wearing gloves, a hat, and a mask over his face. Now, any other time, this might be weird, but being that we're within a pandemic situation right now, it was and is perfectly acceptable. You don't think anything of it anymore. Go Carter, for him's company, confirmed his death in a series of tweets on Wednesday morning. We are deeply saddened to inform you about the sudden and tragic loss of our founder and CEO, Fahim Saleh. Fahim was a great leader, inspiration, and positive light for all of us. Our hearts go out to his friends, family, and all of those feeling the pain and heartbreak that we are currently experiencing here at Gokarta. Fahim's vision and belief in us will be with us forever, and we will miss him dearly. Thank you for your understanding as we get through this forever in our hearts. In the very beginning of the investigation, detectives believed that the 33-year-old was murdered by a professional hitman given the way he was killed. His arms and legs were cut off with surgical precision, according to the police. They also stated that they have found contractor bags near the torso. NYPD spokesman Sergeant Carlos Neves claimed all of the body parts were found at the scene but declined to give specifics on where. We have a torso and a head that has been removed, arms and legs. Everything is still on scene. We don't have a motive, he said. This was the day after the finding. Detectives were waiting for fingerprint and forensics taken from the body to come back. According to police, the building elevator surveillance cameras may have caught the victim's last moments. For him is seen entering the elevator on Monday, after which a second man in a suit, gloves, hat and mask join him. The killer appeared to pretend to choose another elevator level to throw for him off his scent. The suspect had his head covered it seemed that for him didn't recognize the killer. So we think, so we thought. When the doors open to his seventh floor apartment, the suspect comes right up behind him and raised his hand. And immediately for him collapsed to the floor. In the beginning, detectives theorized that he may have been incapacitated with a taser or shot. They weren't sure. Then the elevator door closed, so what happened next was not captured on video. The autopsy determined that for him was in fact tasered and repeatedly and fatally stabbed in the torso and neck before he was butchered. The killer seems to have waited overnight, allowing for him's blood to coagulate before setting to work with the electric saw. Despite its gruesomeness, it was not a messy crime scene, a detective said. Fahim's family said in a statement, no words or actions will provide any of us comfort except the capture of the person who exhibited nothing short of evil upon our loved one. He was such a brilliant and innovative mind. The headlines talk about a crime we still cannot fathom. For him is more than what you are reading, he is so much more. His brilliant and innovative mind took everyone who was a part of his world on a journey and he made sure never to leave anyone behind. Mail Online reported that at the time of his death he was being sued by a former prison guard turned criminal who was jailed for using for him's app prank dial to secretly record and listen to employees phone calls. For him founded the app in 2015. The app let Kirk Eddy, the former deputy director of Hudson County Correctional Facility, place a call between two employees without them knowing he was behind it all. 
then he could listen to whatever they said. He listened to their complaints about him and about their jobs. He went on to retaliate against them in the workplace, but it's unknown what that retaliation was. Edie was jailed for 15 months. In 2017, he sued for him for fraud, claiming the app made him think what he was doing was legal, even though he was a correctional officer. U.S. District Federal Court in Newark, former Hudson County Jail Deputy Director Kirk Eady was sentenced to 21 months in prison and three years probation for wiretapping. By the Thursday, three days after the murder of Fahim, New York police made progress in the case and they said they were zeroing in on a person of interest and determining just how Fahim met his end. Multiple NYPD sources confirmed that there was a person of interest that had been identified but was still not yet in police custody. At one point, the insiders declined to reveal further details about the man wanted in the still unfolding case. When there were rumours that someone had been arrested, a spokesman for the New York Police Department disputed that report. Last I was told we don't have anyone in custody, police spokesman Sergeant Vincent Marquis stated. There is no arrest. As we know now, clearly law enforcement wasn't ready to share information that they had at that point. But on Friday, to everyone's surprise, for him's personal assistant, Tyrese Devon Haspel, 21, who grew up on Long Island and lives in Brooklyn, was arrested in the murder. The man accused in his murder was arraigned overnight. And sources tell CBS2 about a possible motive in the case. CBS2's Ali Bauman reports. 21-year-old Tyrese Haspel ignored questions from reporters Friday as he was walked out of the 7th Precinct in handcuffs, wearing a white jumpsuit and horn-rimmed glasses. Haspel is charged with the gruesome murder of 33-year-old tech CEO Fahim Saleh. Mr. Haspel was Mr. Saleh's executive assistant and handled his finances and personal matters. Police say Monday afternoon, Haspel and Saleh rode the elevator up together at the victim's luxury condo building on East Houston Street. The suspect dressed in a black suit with his face covered, seemingly unrecognized by the victim. When the elevator opened directly to Saleh's apartment, police believe Haspel tased and then stabbed his boss in the torso and neck. Haspel allegedly returned the next day to dispose of the victim's body, police sources tell CBS2, but was interrupted by the victim's cousin, possibly buzzing up from the lobby. Mr. Fahim Saleh's cousin discovered his dismembered body in the living room of his apartment with his head, arms, and legs amputated. An electric saw was near the remains. Sources tell us police have surveillance video that shows the suspect sneaking out of the building as the victim's cousin was coming up the elevator. Friday morning, Haspel was arrested about a mile away in NoHo. He was very calm. They just walked him around the corner, put him in the car. Investigators spent the afternoon going in and out of the suspect's Prospect Park apartment building. Investigators were apparently led to the suspect by credit card statements and other electronic records, which is how police reportedly found out about the alleged embezzlement. He faces several charges, including secondary murder. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking seriously. Murder, taser, dismemberment, and they want second degree murder. I'm with you. I have no idea what's going on there, but I will keep checking to see what the hell is going on there. According to family members, as a child, Haspel lived for a while with a foster mother in Elmont, New York State. During high school in Valley Stream on the South Shore of Long Island, he distinguished himself in a 2016 contest to find future business leaders. He then enrolled in Hofstra University in 2017, but he left just after a year. His early years were unstable to say the least. I will bring more to you, I will post it on our Facebook page especially. But it doesn't excuse the actions he's allegedly committed. It's a heinous crime. Detectives believe that the motive behind the killing stemmed from Fahim discovering that his assistant had stolen tens of thousands of dollars from him dis despite the fact that 
for him had given this he had met Haspel when Haspel, Haspel was 16 he took a chance on him and he hired him and then Haspel just grew and grew and grew because for him I think he trusted too easily and he wanted to help anyone that needed a leg up and it was a apparently it came out to be about hundred thousand dollars that Haspel had stolen from the company <laughs> to everybody's absolute shock for him never reported the man to the authorities and he was gonna let him keep his job he even set up a repayment plan for him one that he could supposedly manage which that tells you what kind of person for him was who has let someone not lets but someone steals a hundred thousand dollars from you they embezzle this from your company a company that's out trying to help others sustain their lives their family just to have somewhere to live $100,000 is embezzled and he refuses to call the police, sets up a repayment plan and still keeps his person on as his CEO of finances because that's the type of person he was. That's pretty huge if you ask me. That there's, I don't know where, I don't know how he was so kind because I, I'm not sure I could be. Not a chance in hell. Anyway, so Haspel, get this, felt cheated in the deal. Even though he was the one to steal the $100,000. He felt he was treated unfairly after Fahim asked him to repay the money. He felt cheated. For him, was so generous such a kind person and Haspel wanted him just to consider it bad debt because for him he's a millionaire so what kind of dent did that make this is Haspel's thoughts he thought he was the one being cheated even though he's the one that stole so much money wow so if killing and dismembering for him wasn't enough, Haspel then stole for him's credit card to buy supplies to clean up the mess. He used for him's credit card to go buy this hacksaw. He used it to go buy the contractor bags. What is wrong with this person? So after using the credit card, which by the way, dude, is a seriously low blow. Come on. There is overwhelming video evidence against him. It's already been gathered by detectives of the New York Police Department and it proves that for him was killed by Tyrese Devin Haspel. One of the videos shows Haspel buying the electric saw and the cleaning supplies down at Home Depot. Items that were found on scene. Security footage from inside the elevator shows Haspel using a portable vacuum cleaner to try and cover his tracks. Now I'm not sure which time this is. I'm not sure if this is before he went to this member. I'm not sure if this is after he stabbed him and left him for his blood to coagulate. I'm not sure, but there is a video. Manhattan Assistant District Attorney Linda Four said at the arraignment of Haspel early Saturday morning, which was just after midnight actually, I think, it was about 12.30 a.m., that there was enough evidence to prove Haspel murdered and chopped up his boss. Come on, Linda. Really? Could have worded that better. At the arraignment held just after midnight, as stated, Haspel was ordered to be held without bail on charges of second degree murder for the gruesome crime on Manhattan's Lower East Side. Apart from being seen buying the electric saw with his boss's credit card, 
The clothing Haspel was wearing on the surveillance footage at the Home Depot on the Tuesday match the garments found in his Brooklyn home. This dude isn't the brightest of sparks, is he? Oof. Investigators have also been able to digitally track Haspel to and from the crime scene, Ford added. The evidence in this case is so overwhelming, she said during his arraignment. He is on video surveillance before and after the crime. He has been identified by at least two individuals from the videotapes. Sources told the Post that Haspel was allegedly in the process of chopping up Fahim's body and stashing it in the construction bags when the cousin rang the buzzer, which prompted him to actually flee down the back stairs. The suspect bolt bolted via the staircase as the cousin rode the elevator up stairs. So they really just missed each other. With her impending arrival interrupting the killer's efforts to scrub the bloody condo clean and dispose of the body, the source said that the killer left behind the electric saw used to decapitate the 33-year-old. The source said cleaning materials were also found inside the seventh floor residence. He was dressed like a ninja, full out, so you can't even see his face. He clearly knew what he was doing. We think his intent was to get rid of the body parts and go back and clean it up and make it look like nothing had happened. An officer said. Just two days after the tech millionaire was murdered, his accused killer and trusted employee was already to, he was ready to party. A shocking series of videos obtained by the post show seemingly carefree Haspel and a mystery female companion strolling through NoHo just a mile from the crime scene. He even took delivery of a bouquet of birthday balloons. They had two and two from what we could see in a love heart, gold ones. The balloons were paid for by his murdered boss from the credit card he took from the scene. This guy is the new American psycho, only dumber. One NYPD officer said. On Wednesday, as investigators were sifting through the horrific scene, Haspel allegedly decided to get some rest and relaxation. He rented a loft-like Airbnb across Lower Manhattan at Crosby and Bleecker Streets. Surveillance video shows a man the sources identified, hopping into cabs for some retail therapy, taking strolls with his curvy mystery pal. As cops continue to process evidence throughout the day, Haspel and his gal pal came and went from his rented apartment. Multiple videos show her walking with Haspel while carrying a leather tote bag from the pricey APC store on Mercer Street. Credit card records show he bought the bag for her. Whether it was his credit card or her or, or his boss's, I don't know. Early Friday morning, at least a dozen officers conveyed on the hideaway. More surveillance video shows cops walking a cuffed Haspel to a waiting car. Later that day, the gold balloons would be visible from the street sagging against the inside of the apartment's distinctive half circle window through which the shadows of busy investigators could be seen. Judge Jonathan Svetke ordered Haspel to be held without bail. His next court appearance is scheduled for August 17. As more details become available, I will be sure to update you on this case because it is going to be a big one. But for now, I wish to leave you with this touching plea for him left for the Nigerian government as he did his very best to help stimulate their economy to further help the residents survive. It is a poor country that needed help. Of course, for him knew he couldn't create miracles, but he did do his very best to try and help these families. Thanks for joining me and I'll be back with an exclusive interview with a death row inmate's former spouse, an inmate that is now dead. It's a case of, I know this guy isn't 
perfect angel. He was on, he was in prison for a reason. Um, but I don't believe that he committed the, well, it was another dismemberment. So it was pretty heinous, but there was no blood evidence and no trace evidence left. Nothing connecting this man to his supposed crimes. He was put on death row thanks to some meth addicts testimony and nothing else. I will see you and speak to you and bring you all of that coverage over the next couple of days. Make sure you head over to our pages and let us know if there's anything you want us to look up. Have a good day, guys. Bye. Hey, guys. If you don't already know me, I'm Fahim Saleh, the CEO of Gokata. Uh, I know I've been a little bit quiet uh, as of recent events um, with the motorcycle transport ban in Lagos, but I've been trying to process it and, and figure out how I exactly want to uh, speak on the topic. I mean, uh, it's tough for an entrepreneur who's trying to innovate, who's investing his own money, when this is not my country. It's, it's a country that I, I feel has amazing potential and has amazing people. And they just need the opportunity to shine. And the drivers that were at Gokata, every one of them wasn't there because they just wanted to make money. They were there because they had families. They had children, they had dreams. They wanted to start businesses. They wanted to go to school. They had degrees already, but they couldn't find jobs. For many, Gokata wasn't the final place for their lives. It was a stepping stone to get to that next endeavor. And we were hoping that a lot of these drivers wouldn't be drivers forever. We were hoping that we could place them in higher jobs within Gokata and create a, a, a beautiful community which was developing slowly and, and, and it, 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 was, it was really something that moved me to the point where I was okay putting all my money and all my effort in. What I'll tell you is that Okada is not just a business to me, it's a mission. And every part of that mission was always being safe jobs. We had, we do things that nobody else did in the market at the time. We provided helmets that were DOT certified, Department of Transportation certified, U.S. Department of Transportation certified, which means that if you get in a motorcycle accident with that helmet, that you are protected. We put Bluetooth on our helmets so drivers did not use their phones while they're on their motorcycles so they could get directions through their Bluetooth headsets. We provided drivers with these high-end bikes that were 200 cc's and we maintained the bikes because a bike that is not well maintained could and is more likely to get in an accident. We trained our drivers extensively and we monitored drivers through technology as I said earlier to understand which ones were the bad ones and eliminate them immediately. All this resulted in an accident rate that was well below 0.1%. Actually, since we relaunched in September 2019, we've had about 250 accidents, mostly minor, out of the 350,000 or so rides that we've given. I will tell you, our drivers are safe. I will tell you, we will show you the records to show our drivers are safe. And every day, our priority is not how much money we're earning, it's how do we make our service safer. You know, as an entrepreneur, I'm never gonna give up because that's the true attribute of an entrepreneur, never giving up. But this has definitely been a blow. Um, entrepreneurs are the ones that really change countries. 
that really change cities. They're the ones who bring the vision. They're the ones who bring the passion. They're the ones who bring people together to make amazing things happen. So Legos, if you want amazing things to happen, support your entrepreneurs. Support these great innovative businesses that are seeking to change Legos. If not for Gokata, for the next Gokata, and for the one after that. Thank you. Thank you.